Welcome back everyone to Lamb's Cryptoverse. Today I'm going to talk about Silicon Valley Bank, also called or well, known as SVB. Today I want to explain in simple terms what is happening with Silicon Valley Bank. Today I think is one of the biggest milestones of 2023. I think if if and when a recession is cold, they're going to say that SVB, the Silicon Valley Bank, is how it all began. And I'm comparing this, I'm using the analog of the Great Recession back in uh, 2007. I think, and I remember it very, very vividly, the Great Recession, and I remember when it started, to me, the Great Recession started here. And I've got a, an article for you from history.com. It started right here, April 2, 2007. I remember this day very clearly because I was really worried about a, a financial recession and about the reflexivity and self-feedback loops that could happen because of what was going on with subprime loans. I had been reading about subprime loans for at least six months to a year. This is before April 2007. So I had kept my eyes open and I had read what to me is one of the most phenomenal books on investing. And no, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not Dodd and Frank. It's um, Dodd and Frank, I meant to say uh, uh, Graham and Dodd, but it's not that. For me, it was um, The Alchemy of Finance by George Soros. And he's the guy that, taught me how to fish. He didn't give me fish, but he taught me, gave me tools to help me think. And that's how I realized that this news of New Century's bankruptcy was very significant. And then after that, some people may argue that August uh, 2007 was the beginning of the financial crisis. That's when, uh, it's not here, but that's when BMP, my former employer, that's when I worked in risk management, they're the ones that actually said they couldn't price three of the funds because they couldn't get mark-to-market pricing on those securities. And that's what started all. But what I want to show you here was even though there was all that news from BNP in August and this major bankruptcy in April 2007 that began the domino effect, the Dow Jones actually hit a high on October 9, 2007. Just think about that. It hit an all-time high. So even though I was worried about the subprime prime crisis in 2006, and even though we had the problem with BNP's pricing, uh, the new century, uh, excuse me, bankruptcy, the Dow still kept going up. And I think the same could happen. I think this SVB bank run, and that's what I'm calling it, because um, after the stock declined 60%, it declined another 22% because there's rumors of a bank run. I think that is what the April 2007 of today. And it may not, so that what I'm saying is the recession may not occur tomorrow. It may take a few months. So let's go and talk more about um, SVB. But before we go there, I want to explain how this all happened. <clears throat> and I, I said I would tell to you in simple terms. So here it is. I think we all know the, the Fed was a it was and is aggressively raising rates. And because of that, the yield curve turned negative. You might be thinking, who cares about a, 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 a negative yield curve? Well, banks, think about it. They borrow, their business is to borrow short term. Let's call it, say it's one year, but it's actually probably shorter. You know, they do repos and things like that. But for all intents and purposes, Let's say it's one year. So if they borrow one year, and the one-year rate is now 5.2%. That's the treasury rate. And they lend over five years. And I'm using five years because the average loan is five years. So if you look at the treasury yield curve, you'll see that the five-year rate is 4.2%. So again, they're lending at 4.2%, meaning underlying treasury. And they're borrowing a, a treasury of 5.2. So, of course, they're lending at a spread of the 
treasury rate, but I want to keep things simple. So if the short-term rate is 5.2, and that's what they're borrowing from, and they're lending from, the lending at 4.2, they're actually losing 1% on the yield curve. So that means they may need, need to make at least maybe like 1.5% in terms of a credit spread. And that's where the difficulty comes in. It's very difficult to do that because credit spreads are very low. So the net interest margin is very low. So that's that's the first issue. The second issue is that the deposits are declining. And one reason, I'm going to show you a chart here from Morgan Stanley. No, not that chart. One reason is this. If you recall, Silicon Valley Bank specializes in tech, tech lending and private equity, things like that. So they're very specialized, and that's not a good thing. As you recall, they say in investing, you should um, you shouldn't keep all your eggs in one basket. But this bank has all its eggs in, in one basket. They're not diversified, and they have a lot of exposure to um, the venture capital, and that just any venture capital. I think some of the venture capital is related to crypto. So that's another issue. And so the problem is the venture capital portfolio companies. So the companies that, that the venture capitals uh, work with, they lend money to, you know, they do seed financing, you know, one and then A, B and C, whatever uh, financing. Those, those portfolio companies are losing money. And you can see here, and the and the and the line here, the the, the it says here cash burn and balances of all startups. You can see that if you look at that line, that it's it's going down and the numbers are negatives. And I've got my pointy here. So they, they went negative in Q1 2002, and then it went more negative and it's kept negative. And this is up to Q4 22. And I'm sure in Q1 2023, it's also going to be negative. And think about that. If they're burning cash, if, they're the, if there are these outflows, so they're burning cash and they're banking through Silicon Valley, that means there's less and less money being held, being deposited, be deposited at Silicon Valley, right? Because they need that cash that they've got on deposit to pay their employees. So that's the second issue. Now, now, the other issue that is that overall lending has been declining, notwithstanding this. Like outside of this, normal lending for them has been, been declining and deposits have been declining overall. And that's been an industry-wide uh, thing that's been happening. So that's, and I'm looking at everything, that's, that's everything. The other, only other thing I want to tell you about is that they have $91 billion in what's called held for, uh, I think it's called HFT, basically held to maturity. So it's HTM. These are held to maturity securities. So they're not marked to market, but they have huge unrealized losses. And they can't be sold easily because if they did, they would have to, uh, under accounting rules, they would have to show even larger uh, losses than they would had would have had if they just held to maturity. So I hope this doesn't sound too complicated. So before I go forward, I just want to review everything. The problem started because the yield curve is negative. And also their deposits are declining and there's a cash burn from the uh, portfolio companies of the VC funds. So that's the that's the problem. So now we're going to go to part two. Part two, and this is what happened yesterday. Part two is that they're noticing, and I think it's a little late, the Federal Reserve has been raising rates for one year now, but they said they believe that rate short-term rates are going to go up. So I would say that no shit Sherlock. So so I think, they again, they should have been doing some kind of hedging or maybe like buying some uh, – futures and short-term bills, like treasury bill futures and, and maybe rolling them over 
And by doing that, they could have uh, done some hedging on that. But I guess they didn't do enough of that. So because of that, what they need to do is sell some of their securities and buy like shorter term treasuries, for example. And by doing that, they have less interest rate sensitivity. Again, I know this sounds complicated, so I'm going to repeat it. What they're doing is buying, I'm going to give you just one example. They're buying treasury bills, for example, because treasury bills are not interest rate sensitive. So when interest rates go up, treasury bills actually benefit and they they become more profitable. So that's what they did. So in order to do that, in order to fund the purchases of the short, short term treasury bills, they had to sell what's called AFS. That's available for sale securities. But the problem, I'm sorry, this is getting complicated. The problem with selling those available for sale securities is that they had a large loss and they had to plug that loss. I think that loss is about $1.5 billion. In order to plug that loss, they had to sell preferred stock and equity. And so by selling equity and preferred stock, especially equity, what that does is it creates more shared, more shares outstanding, and that creates dilution. So this is the same thing as having a, a token unlock or a vesting period that unlocks when you're looking at crypto. It's the same thing. So it's basically a bad tokenomics for Silicon Valley Bank. So now I'm going to show you some specifics of what I said in a Moody's report and S&P report. So the first one is Moody's. And because of what I just told you about selling those um, available for sale securities at a loss, Moody's downgraded uh, SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, um, about a notch to uh, triple B plus, basically, BAA1. And they mentioned the deter deterioration in the bank's funding. Okay, I didn't, I didn't mention that to you. I did mention that the because of borrowing at, at a... At a, short, at a short term for high cost, it's expensive. But I didn't tell you, what I didn't say to use is that they're using wholesale funding and that's expensive. And they mentioned that somewhere here. So that's one thing. And then I mentioned to you here, I said one and a half billion. Actually, I was incorrect. It's 1.75 billion. They raised equity and debt. And that was to cover the hole that they had in the losses from, from selling the AF. AFS, available for sale securities. Uh, what else did I want to tell you? And they also mentioned that they increased the provision expense. So one thing I didn't tell you is not only did they have losses on what they're selling, they have uh, increased uh, loan loss reserves because of, actually I did tell you, because of these longer term assets. The, uh, that's the, the ones I'm telling you that held to maturities. Those are uh, unrecognized, so they're building out some loss reserves for that. And and I mentioned this to you already in green. It says the downgrade was driven by liquidity risk as they completed a sale for the of their available for sale portfolio. And this is the held to maturity. HTM is uh, has about fifteen billion dollars of losses. And I mentioned to you that that's a big um, loss. But they also have a big portfolio, but still it's not enough. I think it's $91 billion of held to maturity uh, securities. And here's what's interesting. Moody says that they have better than peer at, uh, quality performance and above peer uh, capitalization. So this is a 40-year-old company. It's been around a long time. They're experts in technology lending. And they've done better than their peers. And despite that, they're having problems. And I'm going to tell you why they're having problems later. But first, I want to talk to you about S&P. So let's get that report. Here it is. So uh, let's, let me get a drink. I'm losing my voice. So basically, as um, I'm not going to repeat it. Basically, S&P did the same as Moody's. They lowered the rating. They mentioned customer deposits of uh, declining. I mentioned that to you already. And they mentioned that the technology-focused depositors are burning through the cash. And that's what I mentioned to you. 
And these depositors are number one, they tend to be small tech companies. And number two, they tend to be companies that are part of the portfolio of venture capital uh, funds. So it's really like, I think of them as, as two different cohorts. So just, just keep that in mind. And here you're seeing that the, the deposit outflows will be funded with higher cost uh, wholesale borrowings. And I mentioned that to you that the shorter term borrowing is actually more expensive uh, for them than, the, than the, what they're lending out to. That's the problem. That's the yield curve issue I've been talking about. And now here's the issue that's really important. And this is why the stock is declining. It's this here. It says there's a high proportion of accounts with balances over $250,000 from the FDIC. And remember, this is insurance, but think about it. This is not a, a, a consumer bank. Maybe the average consumer has, I don't know, $50,000 in the bank, $100,000 the most. But the average corporation has way over two fifty. dollars That means that these deposits are not being guaranteed. That's a very important point to remember. And I'm going to show you why in a second. And one good thing is that they can borrow from the Federal Home Loan Bank. So there is some something of what you call a backstop. So even though they don't have insurance, enough insurance for their customers, they do have a backstop. Uh, and this in blue, I mentioned already, this is a 91 billion health to maturity portfolio. But like I said, there's a lot of unrealized losses of $15 billion in that portfolio. Okay. This is what's leading to my next point. I'm glad this is the last point I'm talking to you about because this is actually leading to why the stock is crashing. It says here, they only above, if you remember above, they only lowered the rating to triple B minus. But if you look here, it says we could, we could lower the rating if the deposit runoff, runoff accelerates. My friends, that's called a bank run. And that's what I'm showing you right now. That's the problem. And here it is, right here. This came out tonight from a news organization called Semaphore. And it says, some VC firms are urging their founders, and, and some people mentioned Peter Thiel. It says that they're urging their founders to pull money from tr the troubled Silicon Valley Bank. So remember earlier I said to you that uh, these portfolio companies had cash burn, and so those deposits are declining, and some of them have loans. But here's a deal. Here's where it gets crazy. The VC firms themselves, which, which themselves probably have money in Silicon Valley Bank, they're pulling out of the bank, and they're telling their portfolio companies, and I'm, I'm sure that's crypto too, they're telling all those companies to get the hell out of Silicon Valley Bank, to basically starting a bank run. And this, my friends, is why I'm saying that this is the beginning, this is a milestone, this is the beginning of what could be a recession in the United States. And I want to see if I missed anything, because oh, I missed the stock price, so we're going to talk about that. And this is the last slide I want to show you. Silicon Valley Group, and it trades under the name SV, SVB Financial Group. This is a holding company. It declined 60%, but that's not the news. That's not the major news. The major news, news should have been that Silvergate is uh, liquidating, but that's not the major news today. It's actually this, SVB. But tomorrow, when you read this today, I should say, you're going to see that SVB is opening 22% lower at $83. So it declined again. So it's, that's an 83% decline in only two days. That's insane. This, my friends, is a bank run. And so this is the second basically the second bank run in two days, right? So that is insane. And you cannot blame it on idiosyncratic risk or crypto risk. 
This is systemic risk. And that's why I think this is a major, major deal. Well, thank you all for listening. I hope I was able to explain this somewhat in a clear way. I know this is not easy to to talk about. I don't want to repeat it again. You could just play it back from the beginning. But this is a big, big deal. And it's also a big, big deal to me. If you like, hit the like button on the bottom and you subscribe to us. Because if you do so, I can continue doing these videos and explaining blockchain, crypto, and even some finance and some stocks to you. Thank you and goodbye.